by Justice It's Friday, and I think that I'm going to need to request the change of day again, but I don't know what day, so I'll get back to you on that probably within the next few days as soon as I'm thinking about it. So before I get into my video for today, the reason why I'm requesting the day change is because Fridays... I work from 10 to, not to from, from 10, but until 10 o'clock. I work from 1.30 to 10. That's my new schedule that I've had for the past couple weeks now. Um, I can probably manage Thursdays. Thursdays might be the day I switch back to. I know I keep changing from Thursday and Friday. I'm sorry. Um, it's just because I need to um, for scheduling purposes. But for the time being, I'm going to keep my schedule as is on Friday. But I, like I said, 10 it may change. Just a warning. Probably to Thursday, because Thursday's the easier day, and I highly doubt you want me to record videos on Saturday. So, yeah. We'll talk about that later. Probably tomorrow, because we're probably going to be in call tomorrow at some point. Because that just seems to be us. Um, anyway, so, yeah. Today is Friday, and I... Had a relatively slow day at work. Um, my last hour, I had a peer listen to my calls, and we just kind of sat there and talked about Zelda and did kind of stupid stuff because I literally was waiting 10 minutes between calls. And that was fine. I wasn't bothered by it. I also was reading a lot of your messages telling me about how Thunderbirds was, and it sounds like it was a riot. Um, but yeah, so today is uh, a day that I'm recording. Duh. <laughs> and uh, Josh and I both are home just kind of chilling out and we were talking about stuff and Josh is like, oh yeah, I record my brother, my uh, video for my brother. And I'm like, ah, crud, I need to record my video for justice. Well, got to do that. My phone also died, so I had to, you know, wait for it to charge before I could start recording. So that was the thing. Um, but yeah, I'll see how next week goes. And if I have a problem trying to upload it, I might ask officially for a change. Like I said, we'll talk it over. I'm going to sidebar that before I continue talking about that in a circle for the rest of the video. Um, so yeah, I don't really have a lot to talk about, aside from the fact that on my ride home, I heard a very interesting article on the NPRE, which is the... Uh, NPRE, which is the... Uh, NPRE is what you passed. Yes, the yes, NPRE yes. is what I need to deal with. So... Um, Josh over here is a great person who passed one of his exams that he had Woo! to take. So he is excited about that, and he's been talking about it. He got 102 out of 120, Yep. which is good because he needed an 85 out of 120, right? Yep. So he's happy because he passed that, which means that he's going to need to send his, like, he sent his application in for the bar exam, and he did it for Connecticut, and now he's just like, but I could take it in Massachusetts now. I think I'm going to message, like, call up Connecticut and switch over to Massachusetts. And I'm like, okay, as long as we're not paying for two bar exams, I don't care. We will be paying for two bar exams. How much are we paying for two ex bar exams? Uh, it's only, the vast one's cheaper. It's only, like, $800. Great. Okay, so that's more money out of pocket than I expected that we'd be paying. But that's okay. Like, Same. because we had saved money up for this event, and we figured it'd be about $1,000, $2,000 anyway. So I'm glad I saved that money back, and I'm glad I've got money still saved back for our trip in August. I've just got to figure out what our plan is. Um, we've also got a pretty decent amount of money there. So that's, uh, so that's number two out of, I don't know how many parts this is going to be, because there's actually a lot that happened. Number three is that Josh got his credit card, not credit card, his debit card stolen, quote unquote. Not, not stolen, it was just the number. I mean, that's still stolen. Somebody took his number and used it to make payments in Worcester. So, yes, that's part three. It's not a really important thing, but we canceled that card and we have to get a new one tomorrow. Not a big deal. Josh will do that before I go to work. Or when I go to work. One of the two. Not sure. So that is part three out of the part I don't know how many's. So that's that. And now on to the NPRE discussion. Um, actually, on my ride home, it was actually really interesting because I just popped on uh, the New England Public Radio to hear what they might have had. Um, I don't know why I keep saying any part. It's NPER. N N E P R. Yes, N E P R. It's New England Public Radio. N E P R. <sighs> I'm not tired, just been talking a lot, so I'm like all over the place. So many acronyms. Which one's which? I don't know. Anywho. So they had actually a very interesting a discussion about chemical warfare while I was on the ride home. Um, I actually happened to catch it right as it started up. And it was talking about, like, um, what it was and, like, how it started and a lot of really interesting information about it, which, um, like, explained, like I said, what it was, which is um, most 
because of like the bombings in Syria and everything. And the discussion that they had was that um, like how it affects your body. It causes you to seize up um, enti entirely, like closes down your nervous system, uh, causes your uh, mouth to fill up with saliva, your heart spasms and everything else. It's kind of terrifying to hear about. And then you're dead because that's how it works. It sucks. But yeah, so there's that. And they were talking about like that and like how there were so many countries in the world, I think 112 that have signed, uh, not petitions, but basically statements stating that they will not be using uh, chemical warfare or chemical weapons, period, um, for the UN and things like that through a treaty and I don't remember everything about it, but it also talked about like what kind of chemicals they were and like how it became revolutionized back in the 1930s because of the fact that like originally we were using mustard gas and um, I don't remember the other gas, but they were using like two different gases that were oh, chlorine, which were uh, known for like their smell or their coloration and everything. And then everything changed when they realized that there were components that you could use that were both colorless and odorless that could easily kill people and it just kind of completely changed everything with chemical warfare especially coming up on world war ii and so it was just a very fascinating discussion and even though i don't have the time nor the ability to explain everything because i only heard part of the article it was really interesting to listen to from the bbc and it's one of the reasons why i really like public radio um but yeah so that was part four to my four part Apparently it was four parts. I didn't know how long it was going to be. Video. And I'm going to try and upload this and hopefully it gets posted before Saturday. I will see you on Monday.